Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into something you might have encountered often when you are out and about. Those Wi-Fi networks that requires you to log in through a web page known as captive portal. These are common in public places like cafes and airports. In today's video, I am going to show you how we can build a device that can create such a portal using our ghostling device from the previous project. If you remember last time we built a Wi-Fi jammer, today we will see how the same device can also set up a captive portal. So let's get started. Alright, let's talk about what a captive portal is and how it works behind the scene. A captive portal is a web page that you are automatically directed to when you connect to certain Wi-Fi networks. Especially in public Wi-Fi like cafes, airports or hotels, it is used to manage network access ensuring users agree to certain terms or authenticate before they are fully connected to the Wi-Fi. Here is how it works step by step. First, when you connect to a Wi-Fi network, your device is assigned an IP address but internet access is restricted. Any attempt to access a website is intercepted by the network. Instead of loading the requested page, you are redirected to a captive portal page. This page typically asks you to log in, accept terms, or provide some form of authentication. Once you complete the required steps, the network grants you full access to the internet. This ensures that only authorized user can use the internet and adding a layer of security and control. Understanding this background helps you see why captive portals are commonly used and how they manage network accesses. This channel does not promote or encourage any illegal activities. All contents provided by this channel is meant for educational purpose only. Using the ghostling device. In the previous video, I have shown you how to connect the ESP8266 microcontroller, especially the Node MCU, to your computer. If you don't have the ghostling device, no worries. You can simply use a Node MCU board. Just connect it to your computer and install the necessary software, it will perform the same functions. Let's get started with the installation process and set up our captive portal step by step. First, you will need to head over to the GitHub repository linked in the description. Once there, download the file named captiveportal.ino. After downloading, simply double click the file, it will open the Arduino ID. Once in the ID, go to the file menu, select preference and paste the board link provided in the description into the additional board manager URLs field. This will allow the ID to recognize the node MCU board or the ghostling device. Next, connect your node MCU or the ghostling device to your computer. Go to the tools menu under board, search for node MCU 1.0 ESP12B module or the board that you are using. Select it and the Arduino IDE will automatically configure for this board. If after connecting the node MCU or the ghostling device or any other board that we are using for this project is not recognized by the computer, that might mean that the required drivers are not installed into your computer. You might need to install those drivers before the device can be recognized by your computer. So just head over to the YouTube and search for the required driver for your board and install them and you will see that the ID will be recognizing your device again. So after you have opened the code, now we can modify it according to our need. So first of all over here as you can see it is written hashtag define SSID name and then the name of the Wi-Fi that it will be broadcasting. I have given the backyard hacker but you can put any other Wi-Fi name that you need like free Wi-Fi, railway Wi-Fi or any other Wi-Fi that you want to copy. And also after that there are different credentials that are given over here that will be shown in the web page. So I have tried to keep this code as simple as possible so that you guys do not feel any issue while updating or or modifying these codes so this is a very simple code written in c language and i have used html css for the web page so you can just modify these codes according to your needs so i have designed this according to my needs which i thought that will be more attractive and appealing to the users also, I have included this void blink function for those who are not using a display with the node MC. This blink function will blink the LED in the node MC five times whenever it gets a new email ID and password. Finally, hit compile and then upload. This will program the node MCU to act as a captive portal. Once the process is complete, your device is ready to use. Now that we have successfully uploaded the code to the node MCU or the ghostling device, let's move on to configuring it and demonstrating how the attack works. First, I powered on the ghostling device. On the OLED display, it shows a message saying captive portal activated along with the SSID name it is broadcasting. 
Now I took my smartphone and connected to the Wi-Fi network being broadcasted by this ghostling device. As soon as I connected, it automatically redirected me to the sign-in page and the page asked for email ID and password. Now here is where the intelligence of this setup kicks in. If you leave the email and password field blank, the portal wouldn't let you proceed. For example, when I tried to continue without entering any details, an error box appeared saying I need to enter a valid email. Then I tested it by entering a random invalid email, just garbage text. The portal immediately flagged it as an invalid, prompting me to enter a proper email format. Next, I entered a valid looking email but left the password blank. Again, the portal caught this and displayed an error message saying password cannot be blank. Only after entering both a valid email and password was I able to sign in. After signing in, the system took about 10 seconds to validate the details before redirecting me back to the signing page. Now, here is the interesting part. The email ID and the password that I entered were displayed on the OLED display on the ghostling device and the node MCU that has an LED will be blinking for 5 seconds or for 5 times. For those who don't have an OLED display connected, you can still retrieve the credentials. Simply open a browser on a connected device and type 172.0.0.1 slash pass and you will see the email ID and the password there. This demonstrates how the ghostling device can act as a fully functional captive portal complete with intelligent input validation and data capture. Whether you are using this for ethical hacking or just to learn more about network security, it's an excellent example of what this little device is capable of. And that's it for today's video. We have successfully built and demonstrated a working captive portal using the ghostling device but don't think this is the end this device is capable of so much more in the next video we will explore some of its more amazing functionalities and see just how versatile it can be if you enjoyed this video or found this helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out the upcoming content thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one